This content is made possible by sponsors like today's Babbel. Learning a new language is something that can help you out in business, traveling, and benefits your cognitive ability. But it's also something that's difficult and overwhelming to do on your own. Babbel offers a solution. Babbel is a language learning app designed specifically to get you speaking as fast as possible. They focus on teaching you the most important practical language that you'd actually use in conversations through short interactive lessons, offering you multiple ways to learn with live classes, lessons, games, and more, all designed by real language teachers. All of this is why Babbel has become one of the top language learning apps in the world and is scientifically proven to get you to start speaking a new language in just three weeks. I've just recently finished their full Spanish course and can say that it personally got me to a level in which I was able to speak with native speakers on a recent trip. If you'd like to give them a try and want to start learning a new language today, scan the QR code on screen or click the link down in the description to receive 60% off your subscription. Thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring this video and making this content possible. Imagine, for a moment, you were there. It's 1994 in East Rutherford, New Jersey, where Pink Floyd is performing on tour for their new album, The Division Bell. You're shoulder to shoulder with roaring fans as beaming lights dance across the night sky, when suddenly, two words appear in bright lights at the front of the stage. Enigma Publius. You might know every song of every album, but you have no reference for this phrase. Around you, though, you notice that a few actually do. The crowd is filled with some of the most dedicated Pink Floyd fans in the country. Many even frequent the band's message boards, and some might have even seen a post from a user named Publius two days prior. To validate the trust of those who believe, as well as to reconcile the doubt of others, I have gone to great lengths to plan the following display of communication. Monday, July 18th. East Rutherford, New Jersey, approximately 10.30 p.m., flashing white lights. There is an enigma, trust. It all lined up. The date, the time, the place. What could have just been a throwaway hoax by some user on a fan board suddenly became something more. And even if you didn't know it just yet, there in that buzzing crowd, you just witnessed the birth of a mystery still unsolved to this day. Today, we'll be taking a deep dive into a mystery at the crossroads of music and internet culture, the puzzling story of Publius Enigma. A mystery so strange that despite almost three decades of intense scrutiny and countless attempts to decipher its meaning, there is still no concrete answer. But to understand all of that, we first need to rewind a bit, back to the beginning. By the time the Publius figure posted his first cryptic message, Pink Floyd had long established themselves as pioneers to all of rock music. From their sonically experimental debut, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn, to critical juggernauts like The Dark Side of the Moon, the band was by all means a cultural icon by the time the words Publius Enigma shined across that concert floor. And shined, they did. Publius Enigma as a mystery far surpasses just this one incident. At its core, it refers to a series of interconnected hidden messages that appear in Pink Floyd's music, artwork, and merchandise. Born during the world tour for their latest album, The Division Bell, these messages seem to lay out a carefully crafted puzzle that pointed to a deeper truth, a hidden meaning waiting to be fully uncovered. In 1994, at the start of the tour, the band's record company, Columbia Records, sent an 194-foot-long airship called the Division Bell to travel between concert locations. Meanwhile, the press were sent a Columbia Electronics press kit, which included a promo video that featured interviews with band members, airship footage, and a segment with the following message from a Pink Floyd representative. You have spotted the Pink Floyd airship. Do not be alarmed. Pink Floyd have sent their airship to North America to deliver a message. The Pink Floyd airship is headed towards a destination where all will be explained upon arrival. Pink Floyd will communicate. Then, on the 11th of June, 1994, a message was posted to the Usenet newsgroup alt.music.pink-floyd by a user who utilized an anonymous remailer service. 
The message read, My friend, you have heard the message Pink Floyd has delivered, but have you listened? Perhaps I can be your guide, but I will not solve the enigma for you. All of you must open your minds and communicate with each other, as this is the only way the answers can be revealed. I may help you, but only if obstacles arise. Listen, read, think, communicate. If I don't promise you the answers, would you go? Publius. This would be the first of several cryptic messages posted to the news group by a user known only as Publius. Their next post would clear up some of the confusion while also issuing a more direct challenge to Pink Floyd's fan base. In a follow-up to their initial post, which was beginning to gain some traction, they wrote, As some of you have suspected, the Division Bell is not like its predecessors. Although all great music is subject to multiple interpretations, in this case, there is a central purpose and a design solution. For the ingenious person or group of persons who recognizes this and where this information points to, a unique prize has been secreted. How would wear the Division Bell? Listen again, look again, as your thoughts will steer you, leading the blind while I stared out the steel in your eyes. Lyrics, artwork, and music will take you there. Publius was urging fans to find a hidden message or purpose within Pink Floyd's latest album, with some kind of unique prize at the end of it all. As you would expect though, even back in 1994, people on the internet were skeptical of a random user posting vague riddles online, especially when claiming to be associated with a band as large as Pink Floyd. So, to deter the growing skepticism in the community, Publius returned on July 16th to provide future proof of their authenticity. This was the message that predicted the light show in New Jersey two days later. And to the surprise of many, it actually came, just as predicted. On July 18th, 1994, the words Enigma and Publius lit up the stage. If people weren't paying much attention to Publius before, they certainly were now. As diehard fans began to obsessively scour Pink Floyd's lyrics, artwork, and music as suggested in Publius' earlier post, more Easter eggs were found pertaining to the Enigma. During a televised concert that took place at Earl's Court in London on October 20th, 1984, the word Enigma was projected in large letters onto the backdrop of the stage while the band played Another Brick in the Wall Part 2. The footage was even included in a DVD film called Pulse, released in 1995. Strangely enough though, in this release, the word Enigma was altered with lines to make it less visible. And when it was re-released in 2019, as part of the years later box set, the word Enigma was almost completely cut from the video. Another clue came when Pink Floyd's album titled A Momentary Lapse of Reason was released on minidisc later in 1994. The word Publius had been clearly inserted into an artwork of a man standing in a rye field, and in a different picture from the same album, the word Enigma appears in the lower corner of an image that depicts a man standing on the edge of a cliff. What did these appearances mean? Nobody really knew, but it was clear someone was trying to keep the mystery alive outside the Usenet group. As for Publius, they continued to post on the news group even offering to steer seekers in the right direction where necessary. In one notable post, they advised the following. For several months, I have watched and found that you have speculated on one level of meanings. However, no one among you has yet discovered the beginnings of what has always been there and the unusual challenge that has been included. So now I have been given a task as your guide to begin pointing you in the right direction. The rest of Publius' message calls out those doubting their legitimacy, saying that it would be their own skepticism that precludes them from the prize, and also points to further clues being found in their old posts. After this, Publius made a few more posts, including one where they would explain that their communication will become less frequent as they were only supposed to help if obstacles arise, not directly supervise or acknowledge progress regularly. The point Publius was trying to make was clear. Users were largely left to figure out the mystery on their own. Even so, they still went on to update fans all the way until 1997. It was around this time that the mystery seemed most alive, and a solution seemed closest in reach. 
Throughout the 30 years of the Publius Enigma mystery, many theories have been proposed. I myself have looked through just about every old forum post, website, and blog page that is still accessible revolving the topic. And while none of them quite give concrete proof, there are definitely some interesting theories out there. Everything from a secret code left by the band itself, to hints of a new album, and even the independent and largely unauthorized work of a devoted fan have been raised as potential answers. But let's start by taking a look at some of the most popular ones throughout the years, before diving into what I believe to be the most likely answer. One particularly interesting theory was proposed by a user named The Sun on the Usenet group. Joining the Usenet group in 1995, they went on to document their experiences on publiusenigma.blog, particularly raising the theory that the clues were pointing specifically to Detroit, Michigan. In the Division Bell tour guide for North America, they explain, there is a page with a list of cities from the tour. If you hold that page up to the light from the cape of the other side, it points to the it from the word Detroit. An editor had to have planted the clue on the magazine's page for it to end up like that. So the man with the pointed cape in the tour guide stands directly between the letters I and T in the word Detroit when you hold the city's page up to the light. While this might just seem like a strange coincidence, User of the Sun believed this was a clear reference to a Publius post where they stated, I have been given a task as your guide to begin pointing you in the right direction saying that the guide and point were hinting at the guidebook and the cape pointing to Detroit. In addition, there were a couple other clues giving the Detroit theory some credence. In a Guitar World magazine interview with David Gilmour, the guitarist for Pink Floyd, there is a graphic quote of him saying, I know nothing whatsoever of this Publius character. I was told people are hunting for something, but I don't know what it is. The it is from this graphic quote, sits right above the word Detroit, leading some to believe that the mention of Publius is actually a hint saying it is Detroit. Yet still, this all just seemed like mostly a coincidence, and no concrete details on what could possibly be in Detroit were found. So it's hard to believe that any part of this theory is not just accidental. The next one is a little more convincing though. Over this mystery's existence, one thing has stood out as the best piece of evidence the lights that read Enigma Publius that night in New Jersey. It's something that doesn't just happen because some random person online wants it to. It's something that connects the mystery directly to the band, their management, or at the very least, someone associated closely with them. So let's take a look at what they had to say themselves. English author Douglas Adams, who is credited with giving the Division Bell album its title, seemed to disagree with it being the band's own doing. He stated at the time of the Publius Enigma hype that I don't know anything for sure. All I can say is it sounds like nothing at all the band would do, and sounds everything like something that a fan with too much time on his hands would dream up. Now I know what many of you might be thinking. How would a fan be able to access and alter the band's lighting, artwork, and promotional material to keep this mystery going for such a long period of time? Yet, for a while, whenever they were asked about the Enigma, Pink Floyd's band members categorically denied having anything to do with it, or only hinted at something lightly. However, in the years since, some band members have pointed fingers in the direction of another source one that would have the access required to carry out its implementation, Pink Floyd's record company, EMI. In a 2002 web chat, guitarist David Gilmore commented that the Enigma was, quote, some silly record company thing that they thought up to puzzle people with. Then in 2005, drummer Nick Mason provided a much more detailed response during a book signing that seemed to back up what his guitarist said. That was a ploy done by EMI. They had a man working for them who adored puzzles. He was working for EMI and suggested that a puzzle be created that could be followed on the web. The prize was never given out. The prize was something like a crop of trees in a clear cut of the forest, or something to that effect. It was not to be a prize of some tangible thing. To this day, it remains unresolved. And prior to Mason's comments, an interview with Mark Brickman, the band's lighting and production designer, echoed a similar message. 
Overall, it seemed like a big development and a big disappointment at the same time. On the one hand, it pointed to solving who was behind the whole thing, but with that same hand, suggested that it was all for nothing. Some suspected money, others guessed a special copy of some mysterious unreleased album, but few expected the intangible, mundane thing Mason seemed to be suggesting. Even stranger, it made a lot of sense. The reason behind this has to do with the fact that the mystery was released as part of the Division Bell album tour. Historically, a division bell was rung for members of British Parliament to signal that a vote was about to occur. And with the album cover being two large heads facing each other, there is clearly an emphasis on communication. And this is made even more apparent by the publius posts that mention communication in opening the mind. Others have also focused distinctly on the album's title and cover to try and unravel the mystery. In January of 2020, a Publius Enigma subreddit was created by Redditor HumbleBob2. In trying to summarize the Enigma, he wrote, Well, the album itself was called The Division Bell, representing many things including the aforementioned divide between the two categories of people. Us and Them, a famous Pink Floyd song, is another reference to the void between the two sides. The Publius Enigma slash Division Bell was an attempt to reach the public and try and remove this void. These kinds of theories have become widely accepted, but not necessarily to the mystery's greater benefit. It points to the answer being simply based around bringing people together, or opening your mind to someone else's view. It seems anticlimactic, to the effect of the real Publius Enigma prize was the friendships we made along the way. But few imaginable conclusions would fit the Division Bell's thematic content as well as this. One Redditor by the name Bonaire Man gave a good summary of this theory where they talk about how the record company most likely wanted to boost sales on the album, especially considering it was underperforming compared to other recent albums. They said, the record company knew this, so they devised a clever prize that would lead intrepid seekers to a grove of trees in a forest, presumably with fellow fans, thus creating a wonderful moment of togetherness and promotional media opportunity. Sadly, no one pursued it to the end and it would turn out to be the band's last album of original material. The enigma in a word, hype. And with all my research into this topic, I believe this general idea to be the correct one. When trying to theorize the reason behind Publius Enigma, I think it's important to remember that this isn't the only conspiracy or puzzle surrounding Pink Floyd. The Dark Side of the Rainbow is another well-known one. Based on the discovery that playing Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album at the same time as the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz results in the two appearing to sync up almost perfectly. And just like with Publius Enigma, the discovery was first shared on an online news group. Even on the band's own website, nestled in thick paragraphs, there is a line saying of the band, true to their beginnings, there has always been an enigma at their heart. And this quote really sticks out to me. It's a reminder of not only how the band has always had fan speculation and theories surrounding them, but also of how strange the group was for their time. Pink Floyd, with its psychedelic origins and albums that defy singular interpretations, seem like the perfect fit for the Publius Enigma experiment. Today, we now know that the user Publius was someone connected to the band, or at least in their record label. It's evident from the phrase's appearance in concerts and the band's public statements. What we don't know is why it never led to anything, even after so much effort was put into it not only by the fans, but even the creators. It almost implies that there was never anything for it to lead to, especially when considering Nick Mason's comment on the prize not being a tangible thing. Maybe that's why Publius Enigma remains a pervasive mystery among fans. In a vastness of unanswered questions, frustration festers. Finding the prize means finding the resolution. And almost 30 years later, we still seem no closer to finding that prize. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing or leaving a like as it really helps me out. If you'd like to see other mysteries I've covered, check out the Internet Mysteries playlist on the channel. Thanks again for watching and have a good night.